I wanted to present uh, a little project uh, we developed when I had the joy to be on an archaeological excavation. I'm not an archaeologist, I'm a geographer doing a PhD on uh, landscape evolution and development. And um, I was working in South Africa with uh, the archaeological team of Nick Connor at Sibudu Cave, which is a Paleolithic site. And um, yeah, the area is um, southern, eastern Southern Africa. You see here the uh, port of Durban. And this is the Indian Ocean and the area is up to the uh, mountain range of the Drakensberg area. Uh, Semi-humid conditions, uh, very moist. Um, yeah. The thing is, we wanted to find out. You see that there are a lot of sites on the southern coast of southern Africa, but there's a lot missing in the eastern part. This is um, a query from the road database, the database, the Rocky project, the project I work for, developed for over t uh, 10 years now, uh, which has, I think, 3,000 or 7,000 uh, um, sites from the Pleistocene with assemblages and cultural data and ecological data and all that stuff, just to make a bit uh, advertisement. And um, all these sites were um, occupied during the two seasons of um, Stillway and Hosen's Port, 70,000 years ago to 60,000 years ago. And yeah, they're missing uh, sites. And now we wanted to map where we can find, maybe find, additional sites. Um, the three known sites there are all rock shelters, which means that they are, um, have a very good preservation. You can see here that they have a very fine stratigraphy of thousands of years. And, um, but what is much more interesting is how they were formed. Uh, you have the cyclical incision of rivers in that area um, where uh, you have lateral erosion which undercuts the slope and forms a cave and then you have sea level low stand which makes the river incise vertically and uh, abandons that old um, uh, river course which leaves behind these rock shelters. Um, and they are very good for site preservation because um, you have off, it's safe from flooding because it's above the stream level and uh, you have rockfall toplings that save your sediments from erosion. Um, we then used a pretty yeah, simple or pretty typical um, workflow for machine learning. Uh, first, you need a sample. We did um, a geomorphological map of the area surrounding Sibudu. And uh, then we tried to um, get the attributes of these samples, of these rock shelters we mapped. Um, first of all, of course, topo indices, but then also later hydromorphologic and lithological information put that in a predictor set and then uh, yeah, um, made a feature reduction mainly based on expert knowledge but also on a statistical correlation um, to get the factors that are important for these sites. Um, so we used a high resolution um, um, radar elevation model um, which is 13, me uh, 13 meters, which is high resolution for radar, but uh, of course not for LIDAR. But uh, it's, it has a very large ex extent. It's a worldwide data set, uh, which covers our 200 kilometers uh, along the coast. Um, we did some, we yeah, calculated some topographic indices, uh, the local ones, typical ones, slope, curvature, openness, uh, visibility, and so on. Um, we also did some regional, like valley depth, uh, or elevation, vertical distance to channel network, hydrological indices, morphological indices, 
and we also categorized the landscape um, uh, into uh, landform classification, uh, topographic position index in that case, or curvature classification, just to quantify the landscape. And the challenge is now to distinguish um, a slope like this. So we, we can't really see the rock shelter because it's a 2.5D model and not a 3D model. We can't look into the cave, but we can get the features a uh, rock shelter has uh, from seen from above. We to distinguish the slope, maybe this slope from the rock shelter, from this slope that is structural and that formed by um, yeah, river erosion. So we had all these predictors and put them in the model and got uh, not so good results because more or less half of the map was uh, predicted as a, a rock shelter, which makes no sense. <laughs> Um, so we decided we um, yeah, needed more predictors and leave all the ones behind. And um, we had a look at the geomorphological processes that form these rock shelters. Uh, I already mentioned that they are formed through fluvial bank erosion. And the um, interesting thing there is they are confined meanders. So they are, cannot roam or meander freely but they are more or less um, bound to a certain course that was uh, already uh, yeah, set before the Pleistocene. And then now they make incision and only very low uh, lateral variation. Uh, yeah, therefore, we use two indices. One is the stream power index, which is composed of the, um, the catchment of each single uh, cell. So the amount of water that is flowing into that cell and the slope, which gives you an idea about the speed of the water. So you can estimate the erosive power with this um, uh, index. And we had a look at the sinuosity. You see here, the sinuosity, it's defined as the way um, a river flows between two points uh, compared to the Euclidean distance or the direct line between those points. And if you have there, for example, a uh, sinuosity of three, then it uh, means that maybe uh, two points are one kilometer apart by Euclidean, or Euclidean distance, but in that uh, area, the river flows three kilometers. And at these places, you have a higher um, uh, uh, bank erosion. Here you see Sibudu cave, and it also has a value, I think, of two. So these uh, green to yellow areas show us the places where we have uh, increased erosive power. And then we also have the geology. Um, so the interesting thing is you have predominantly uh, sandstones and some um, uh, granites that are able to form rock shelters. Others, like mudstones or shales, uh, strictly collapse if you undercut the slope. Um, so you can't have rock shelters there. We use that. And another thing is um, uh, these other uh, surfaces, lithologies, are very deeply weathered in that area. So they're all prone to erosion and if, even if you had artifacts there, they are not preserved, they are mobilized and maybe somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Um, yeah, so we also um, got rid of some um, predictors. We thought it might be useful, but then didn't. Um, one is the distance to the shoreline. Um, you see that Umsla Tuzana, Umbeli Belli, Sibudu, they're all pretty close to the coast. Um, but uh, first of all, here we see that in the time when it was occupied, the sea level was 60 meters lower. They were, which is about this. So the distance to the coast was uh, far longer. Uh, and there is mm, not really evidence for uh, coastal adaptation of these sites because um, there are, um, for example, shells in that site, but they think that they are 
were not used for consumption but more for cultural reasons. So it was more or less the coast was not in their daily foraging distance or just not in their uh, yeah, lifestyle. And um, we also um, got rid of the distribution of lithic raw materials just because you have these intrusions everywhere. Uh, so the, the lithic materials are everywhere. You don't have to select uh, any areas. And uh, we also got rid of um, some highly correlated variables um, just for feature reduction because if you see here that um, Melton set max in elevation or vertical, vertical distance to channel network is very highly correlated to the topographic compound index, they just give no further information. There's no information gained from the models from these um, indices. So we just got rid of them. And uh, we trained a maximum entropy model, which um, yeah, is based on the presence data we got from the geomorphological map and a background sample, uh, not absence data, but a background sample. And it just compares the, um, the attributes of our samples to that of the background and looks where they are very specific. And uh, these uh, attributes are um, they are very important, have, have an important contribution to the model and the response curve. And that's how you model the uh, suitability. It's not called the probability, but the suitability for some mathematical reasons I don't understand. And um, yeah, we also use that model because it's uh, capable to use both numerical and categorical data we uh, wanted to use. And uh, here you see. Um, the, the map we created, uh, you see that there are about 500 potential rock shelters in that area. And uh, what is quite nice that they are more or less concentrated. So you can easily go maybe into that part of that valley and sample them within one day or two. Uh, it matters how detailed you want to do it. And um, yeah. The sites are attributed with the suitability, and you have all the information that uh, from that came from the um, topographic indices. And this year, we also did a um, validation campaign in that area um, uh, earlier this year, where we sampled uh, two rivers, um, one south and one north of the Tongati, the river of Sibudu Valley. And uh, we found uh, that some weren't accessible, some weren't existing. We found a lot of outcrops, and two of them were actually rock shelters. And um, we started also to dig there, found this um, uh, pottery. I have no idea how old it is, but it's still too young for the research of the, of the archaeologists digging there, but uh, they told me I should stop digging when I find this stuff because I might um, destroy their stratigraphy <laughs> again. <laughs> um, yeah, and this was quite a nice result because it showed that it can keep the sediment, can uh, keep the archive. There were also rockfall on top of the sediment, which um, was uh, already weathered. That was for us an indication that the sediment uh, below must be a bit older. Yeah, just to conclude, um, the site prediction was made for that specific region. If you go to another region, you have to find completely different parameters. It helped a lot to um, speak with the archaeologists and run the model again and again with different predictors to find which one are really interesting and have a look at the model at the performance of each uh, predictor and the response curve and yeah the challenges are uh, as i already mentioned that you have uh, a 3d landscape um, derived from a 2.5d terrain model um, the um, 
And yeah, the next step would be to distinguish the uh, rock shelters from the outcrops. Thank you.